Town Administrator's report. We have the year-end solid waste. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, you've got a copy of the memorandum regarding the year-end solid waste report. Um, you've got two documents that are with that. Um, the first report um, reflects trash tonnage recycling, tonnage, total tonnage, and recycling percentages. Uh, as I mentioned in my report for the half year of uh, fiscal year, um, both trash tonnage and recycling tonnage overall are down, and I think that it's more uh, uh, related to the fact that we have barrel limits. Um, uh, the only uh, trash that can be picked up at the curb is if you're in a recycling or a trash toter, and you're limited to four total uh, barrels, and, uh, and they have to be one of those uh, toters that can be uh, handled by the uh, automated uh, system. And so that in itself has uh, done two things. It's reduced the curbside pickup, and it's also increased traffic at the recycling center. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and I'll be getting a, a fiscal year report because Mr. Valente prepares his reports on a calendar year as required by DEP. So um, I'm asking to extrapolate from previous fiscal year and part of this fiscal year. And uh, so we get a, a, a good total for what FY17 uh, entailed, but it, it appears that um, a lot of the recyclables that normally would be at the curb um, are being taken to the recycling center because as, as I mentioned earlier, um, the total number of cars that visit <coughs> the recycling center uh, have doubled uh, over the past year since we went to the program the system and, uh, and a corresponding number also that the uh, recycling tonnage has gone up over 3.2 percent over FY16 and then our recycling tonnage that goes to waste management in Avon has uh, been down by just 114 tons, but that the price costing the town has uh, dropped by over $30,000 uh, because a year ago it cost us $27.61 a ton to get rid of recyclables, and in FY17 the average was $11 a ton. And <clears throat> also, um, I know that the uh, chairman wanted to, me to share an update from. Uh, my uh, visit with the North River Commission uh, regarding the Ludups Ford project, and I uh, prepared a plan for the uh, North River Commission about dividing the park into four sections um, and uh, what we were going to do at each of the four sections. And basically, the only one that really is going to require some uh, heavy lifting is <clears throat> the area along the uh, river uh, between uh, about halfway up. A lot of forward towards the bridge, and that seems to be an area that has a lot of invasive species there. And so, uh, the town's going to have to make a decision whether or not they want to eliminate, you know, that vegetation and replace it with uh, native vegetation, yeah. and also uh, replacing some of the trees that were taken down with uh, some hardier varieties from uh, uh, that would uh, best suit that area. It seems like everything else, the other three areas, yeah, uh, grown up so that the North River Commission is comfortable with the uh, the riverbank between the center of the park and towards the dam, and then everything that's more upland is going to be uh, um, taken care of by the DPW from a, a, a mowing standpoint, and also I'll be appearing before the Conservation Commission um, in um, the latter part of this month with a notice of intent to hydro seed the, uh, the upland um, in the area near the dam. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, the, only, um, the only thing you want to be cognizant of is that um, if you're going to do the hydro seeding um, and replace any loom or anything like that down there uh, during migration period, mm -hmm. then they just have to make sure that they have the proper socks and all that sure. down there that so there is no overflow into the river like there was before, so. And a third item that's not on, uh, listed on my report is something that happened Friday afternoon. 
um, where the uh, health agent was notified by uh, DEP that there was a, uh, a positive testing of uh, blue-green algae on Olden Pond. And the, the problem that we have with this whole situation is that A, the town wasn't notified in advance that the testing was going to occur. Um, the town wasn't notified after the testing occurred about the results of the test. The town's never been given a copy of the test results. Um, the town doesn't know who the person was that conducted the testing. All the health agent found out was that the Depart uh, Department of Environmental Protection said it was a state employee that conducted the inspection. After visually uh, um, checking out Oldham Pond, and so th there were no complaints filed by anybody. Uh, there were no complaints from Camp Pembroke. There were no complaints by the town landing folks. And so um, under the Freedom of Information Act, um, the town is requesting copies of the report that was verbally uh, issued to the town on Friday afternoon and the name of the person that conducted the uh, the testing on the pond and town council has ruled to us that the town is entitled to that and normal procedures would have shown that the town would have known in advance about the testing would have known who's conducting the testing and would have gotten a written copy of the results of the test the other thing um, I just want to bring up to the board also, whether if they're not cognizant of the fact that the uh, brook between Oldham Pond and Furnace Pond has been closed now for a couple of weeks, going on three weeks. And I know they're waiting for some parts to, to put in to the road area where the brook goes underneath the road on Matakisa Street there. But um, whether that has anything to do with the problem in Oldham Pond, I don't know because Usually that runs pretty strong from Oldham in a furnace, um, and it's it's um, hopefully they're going to get it done pretty quick because the water is rising on <laughs> on Oldham on Oldham Pond, so it has to have some place to go. So hopefully they'll get that done as soon as they can. So hmm. there's a lot of juveniles that were leaving early that we we put nets across that area to stop them from even getting into the brook area before they close it off so so um, I know the fish are feeding very well in Oldham right now so <laughs> with all the juvenile heron so as a follow-up to that um, I will say that it appears that DEP <coughs> and or the Department of Public Health conducted testing today we have contracted with uh, Solitude Lake Management who does our treatment to go out there and test the pond tomorrow and uh, hopefully I'll be able to report to the board by email the results of these tests that uh, were conduct that were conducted today and will conduct tomorrow so that we can really look at opening old pond as fast as we can thank you Mr. Good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I just add one quick thing under uh, tonnage uh, reported? Um, as you know, we're, we participate in the Bay State Textile Recycling Program for the schools, for the PTOs. And we have seven containers placed around town, as you know. And for I have a report for the month of July um, which shows that there are uh, 70 towns in this program and we are the sixth highest tonnage reporting town of the 70. And in July, which is what this uh, survey here that I have covers the month of July from 2013, 14, 15, 16, and now 17. 2017 in July, we were up 51 percent 
over July 2016. So just a note to those folks that are taking advantage of uh, putting your clothing that may be ripped or torn or not worthy <coughs> of being given to a charity, uh, put them in these containers and they get recycled uh, by uh, the textile company, which is right here in Pembroke. So everyone's doing a great job. It's another recycling program that is working and uh, uh, thanks to the public. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.